me oh god for someone your prayer is increase me oh god for someone your prayer is like jabez oh that thou wouldest bless me and enlarge my coast hallelujah hallelujah in the name of jesus christ the bible says now the lord is that spirit and it says where the spirit of the lord is he can be everywhere but he does not manifest everywhere but if you do find that place where the spirit of the lord is he says you will know he is there because there will be liberty liberty and then he says we all listen carefully with unveiled face beholding him as in a mirror he says we are changed we are changed everybody here understands a mirror and what it does if you want to look excellent if you want to vet whether what you are doing or your, your look is good or bad, you go to the mirror. And as you look at the mirror, it gives you the basis to begin to make adjustments. Is that true? Yeah. There may be a few materials on your head or on your cloth. You may not easily know until you stand in front of the mirror. When you stand in front of the mirror, you will now begin to make adjustments so the bible says as we behold him you know what happens when we behold him when we behold him we see ourselves as should be not as it is so when you look at the mirror the mirror will reflect something back and tell you you should not be at this level and then like you correct yourself when you're looking at a physical mirror you begin to adjust when you look at the mirror you will see how your finances should be when you look at the mirror you see how your spiritual life should be i'd like you to pray one prayer open my eyes to see lord i need to see things as should be someone is praying i'm here to look at that mirror we've come to draw 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 from you again. We've come to draw, 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 draw from you again. We've come to draw. hallelujah look up please and you see sometimes the mirror does not only help you to adjust the mirror also reveals there can be times that you are looking for something that is even on your shoulder and you may not know that the other the stocking is there and you are searching around but when you look at the mirror it can see that it's been closer to you all the while that I've been searching around, looking from pillar to post, whereas what I've been looking around is within reach. It's only because I could not look through the mirror. The mirror reveals. Father reveal. It can't, it can't. Listen, you need to pray and say, Father, whatever it is that I've been searching around for, you are too merciful to make me go on that journey. There's something I'm not getting right. Show me show me someone pray let it be from the depth of your heart show me let that mirror someone is crying unto god take the meeting serious don't look around pray show me let the mirror reveal let the mirror reveal let the mirror reveal
Oh, let the mirror reveal. Let the mirror reveal something about my destiny. In the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. God bless you. Please be seated. They go from strength to strength as many as appear before the Lord in Zion. It is important for you to realize that you are changing. You must believe it as a revelation that you are changing. It is impossible, very impossible, to be in this kind of atmosphere week in, week out, and remain the same. You may not see it. The same way you may not know what is happening to the seed that is sown in the earth, but something is happening. Hallelujah. Realize that you are changing. The Bible says that we live in this kingdom through food and through words if you eat physical food alone you will not live well you need food and words man shall not live by bread alone he says but by every word that proceeds from the mouth of god father we give you all the praise in the name of jesus it will not tire me to encourage us to be very intentional and to be very serious about every service, every meeting. By the privilege of God's grace, every meeting is tailor-made by God himself and by the privilege of wisdom to attend to specific areas of our lives. Hallelujah. I can assure you of one thing, as I would always say, you will never come for any service where you will leave and say my time was wasted no hallelujah he said i was glad when they said unto me let us go to the house of the lord you can go to a place that looks like the house of the lord and return back knowing it was not the house of the lord but if it is the house of the lord there are many things that must happen there one of it is enlightenment growth by the wisdom and the power of the spirit hallelujah i want you to pay very close attention to tonight's teaching keys to destiny fulfillment i want to teach and then we'll pray we'll be praying many times in the course of the teaching keys to destiny fulfillment the lord is going to be answering a lot of questions tonight and i pray in the name of jesus christ that at the end of this service someone will walk out of this place rejoicing in the name of jesus christ by reason of this teaching someone's morning will be turned to dancing someone's sorrow will be turned to joy in the name of jesus christ and for someone while you are here listening may god be where you should have been if you were not here preparing things for you in the name of jesus and i say it from the depth of my heart that while you are here listening he said martha you are worried and upset about many things he said but one thing is needful and this mary has chosen probably you would have been buying and selling something doing a few things and you left all of that you have chosen that one thing for some of you, because of this choice, there are things you will not need to do again. God will send men ahead of you. In the name of Jesus Christ. When Saul met with Samuel and received the word of the Lord from Samuel, he didn't need to go back and look for the donkey that was missing. That encounter equaled restoration. The donkey went back home to wait for him there. Number two, he didn't need to go and start searching for bread after that encounter. Supply was in that encounter. As he returned, he found three men holding two loaves of bread. They saluted him and gave it to him. There are people who have been holding many things. They don't know why they've not been able to use it. They are holding it for you. God has kept them as caretakers. 
because the season is coming where God will instruct and when the father of spirit speaks I assure you they will release it to you in the name of Jesus Christ for someone here God will take a harvest a harvest worth years worth of harvest and bring to you as a gift in the name of Jesus Christ keys to destiny fulfillment write the word destiny down please write the word destiny down I want to discuss the matter of purpose and destiny as we pray tonight there are many people today who live purposeless visionless lives defeated in utter frustration and many of them would tell you sincerely that it seems like they are looking for something meaning relevance in their lives and as i would always say the only thing you find growing in their life is their age they do not justify the gift of time and years with anything that is pro kingdom with anything that makes for a meaningful life it's a tragedy our world is full of these kinds of people even our environment and it ought not to be so and like I would always say, the bailout, the spiritual bailout system for people's confusion and the tragedies around their life is the ministry of the teaching priest. If people are not enlightened and spiritually oriented to understand the ways of God and then make decisions from that standpoint of knowledge, most people will begin to waste their lives even though they may have a semblance of spirituality, they will not really find fulfillment. And it is dangerous. Dr. Miles Monroe would teach us that there is one thing greater than or worse than death. To live without a life of purpose, a life of fulfillment. When you are alive and you are just existing, that your life is not counting, your life is not making any impact at all. Hallelujah. Destiny very important word what is the meaning of this word destiny please write destiny generally means a predetermined future when we talk about destiny we're talking about a predetermined future generally speaking destiny refers to a predetermined future for the believer destiny means god's predetermined plan purpose and place God's predetermined plan God's predetermined purpose and God's predetermined place for you in his program God's predetermined plan God's predetermined purpose God's predetermined place in his program so when we talk about destiny, we talk about his plan, his purpose, and his place for you as far as his agenda and his program is concerned. Hallelujah. Now this word destiny is very important. Others define it as your destination in Christ. Others define it as where you ought to be or where you should be. At the end of the span of your life the summation of everything that you do daily weekly monthly yearly that culminates to a life of meaning and fulfillment and purpose there are many people who just enjoy the passage of time and they pass along and never understand the concept of destiny nor the keys allocated to fulfilling their glorious destiny three scriptures very quickly Jeremiah chapter 29 and verse 11 please write Jeremiah 29 and verse 11 it says for I know the thoughts that I think towards you saith the Lord they are thoughts of peace and not of evil to give you an expected end please say an expected end that means God is not scratching his head right now wondering what to do with you. There is already a blueprint for your life. That is good news. Because regardless where you are and what challenges you have in front of you now, the Bible says there is an expected end. 
are we together now for some of you who watch movies sometimes when you're watching movies you're kept in suspense especially if a, mu a movie that is a new release and you can be watching and you want to you you wish that you knew the end you know and the suspense you're you're being captured in that suspense and you're watching what will happen to this but when the movie director or the owner of the project as he sits to watch interestingly he would not be as excited as you as far as um he will be excited to see his work blessing you but he won't be in that kind of suspense you know why because he designed the entire thing from start to finish so while that suspense your heart is pounding you are standing not knowing when you are holding your pillow and all kinds of reactions the person is just watching with calmness you know why is who was the music the the, uh, the the movie director god isn't in the panic just because you are panicking about your future don't you think god is joining you in that panic he's seen the end of it are we together while you are wondering what will become of my life in 2022 what will become of my life in the next 10 years sometimes we are tempted to think because we're in panic and shouting god is joining us in that lamentation remember he is called alpha omega he does not just see he designed the end himself it's not like someone designed it and gave him the privilege to see it is his design it is his wisdom and he says here in Jeremiah 29, 11, I know the thoughts that I think towards you. They are thoughts of peace and not of evil. It's important to know that in God's plan for your life, he did not prepare evil, meaning he did not prepare shame, meaning he did not prepare pain. Anything that makes for a, a, an eventual destruction of your life is not part of God's program. An expected end. Second scripture. Ephesians chapter 2 and verse 10. Ephesians chapter 2 and verse 10. Here's what the Bible says. We are his workmanship. Do you know what that means? The tools that he uses for exploits. We are his workmanship created in Christ Jesus unto good works, which God had before ordained that we should walk in it. Is someone reading? God ordained, he legitimized that you should walk in them. So God is not wondering what to do with my life and your life. God is not hoping that by the time you get your attention, then he gets your attention, then he will now start thinking of what to do. The Bible says that he had already ordained that we should walk in them. The last scripture, Hebrews chapter 10 and verse 7. These are all scriptures that validate scripturally the reality of this concept of destiny. Then said I, lo, I come in the volume of the book. It is written of me to do thy will, O God. Lo, I come in the volume of the book, not just in the volume of my wish, my desire. It's been well documented all that I would come to do hallelujah everyone please say after me say i was born for a reason you will think what i'm saying is very simple until um i begin to unveil certain things for you in the course of this discussion say it again i was born for a reason one more time let the devil hear you let the altar wanting to fight you hear you Now, it is dangerous if you were not born for a reason. I was born for a reason. That means I refuse to die just like that. I was born for a reason. Are we together? And then it's important for you to know that you have a destiny. You have a destiny even in Christ. Facts about destiny. I want to give you three very powerful facts that there are many many facts to know about destiny but i handpicked three that are very important for our discussion tonight it is not enough to just know um generally about destiny you have to understand that there are a few facts these truths represent the foundations for actualizing destiny number one every man was born for a reason every man this is this is the the first fact about destiny you have to understand 
every man was born for a reason write this down please still under that point your purpose for existence represents the solution you were sent to bring to our world your purpose for existence represents the solution the solution you were brought to bring or give to humanity so every man was born for a reason your purpose for existence is the solution you were born or brought to bring very very powerful every man is born for a reason every man is born for a reason you have to know this fact romans chapter 8 and verse 30 romans chapter 8 and verse 30 the bible says moreover whom he did predestinate is it in your bible them he also called and whom he called he also justified and whom he justified he also glorified one more time prophesy i was born for a reason john chapter 18 please from 37 and 38 john chapter 18 pilate this was jesus before pontius pilate pilate therefore said unto him art thou a king then jesus answered thou sayest that i am a king to this end was i born and for this cause came i into the world that means i didn't just leave heaven to come and roam around the earth to this end was i born and for this cause came i into the world that i should bear witness unto the truth everyone that is of the truth heareth my voice 38 next verse now pilate said unto him what is truth and when he had said this he went out again unto the jews and said i find no fault in him at all the moment the issue of purpose and destiny came there was no basis for accusation for as long as this man was in purpose he could not find anything against him for this cause i came this is the reason why i was born so fact number one every man every man is born for a reason your purpose for existence represents your solution that god brought you to give to your world fact number two please this is very important your destiny has been predetermined by god but it takes your choices and decisions to actualize it or miss out on it i will take it again your destiny has been predetermined by god it's a very important fact to know that your destiny has been predetermined by god but it takes your choices and your decisions to actualize it or to miss out in it your destiny has been predetermined by god but it takes your choices and your decisions to actualize it that means to come into the experience of it or to miss out on it this is very powerful deuteronomy chapter 30 we'll start from verse 15. deuteronomy chapter 13 the verse of emphasis is verse 19 but let's start from verse 15. see i have said before thee this day life and good death and evil next verse in that i commanded this day to love the lord thy god and to walk in his ways to keep his commandments and his titles and his judgments that thou mayest live and multiply and that the lord thy god shall bless thee in the land whither thou goest to possess it 17 but if thy heart shall turn away so that thou will not hear but shall be drawn away and worship other gods and serve them next verse i denounce unto you this day that ye shall surely perish and that ye shall not prolong 
your days upon the land whither thou passest over jordan to go and possess it let's read verse 19 together ready one to read i call heaven and earth to record this day against you that i have set before you life and death uh-huh blessing and cursing therefore choose life that both thou and thy seed may live is that in your bible so it is true that your destiny has been preordained, predetermined by God, but it will take your choices and your decisions to determine whether you will come into the experience of it or you will lose out on it. This is a very powerful fact about destiny to learn because there are many people who think just being aware that you have a glorious destiny automatically means you will step into it fact number three very sad but very true destiny can be aborted fact number three destiny can be aborted you can lose out on in destiny it is very possible that you can lose out. We're not talking of delay. We're not talking of distraction. It is very possible that you will not leave out the script of your destiny. Acts chapter 1, please. Very quickly from verse 15. Acts chapter 1 from verse 15. And in those days, Peter stood up in the midst of the disciples and said, the number of all of them together were 120. Uh-huh next verse men and brethren he said this scripture must needs have been fulfilled which the holy ghost by the mouth of david spake before concerning judas which was guide to them that took jesus 17 for he was numbered with us and have obtained part of this ministry is it in your bible he was numbered with us and did what obtain part that means a portion of impact was given to him 18 now this man purchased a field with the reward of iniquity say choices say decisions and falling headlong he burst asunder in the midst and all his bowels gushed out next verse and it was known to all the dwellers at jerusalem in so much that the field is called in the proper tongue akeldema which is to say the field of blood 20 for it is written in the book of Psalms, let his habitation be desolate and let no man dwell therein and let his bishopric let another take. Keep that scripture there. Was anybody's name mentioned there? Somebody used the power of choices and decisions to activate that prophecy. There was no name of Judas written there, but somebody used the power of choices and decisions to attract a prophetic word that David said without even knowing what he said it is written 21 wherefore of these men which have companied with us all the time and all of this and that 22 beginning from the baptism of John unto that same day as he was taken to heaven must one be ordained to be a witness with us of his resurrection next verse it says, and they appointed two called Barsabbas, Joseph called Barsabbas, who was son named Justus, and Matthias, 24 now. And they prayed and said, thou, O Lord, which knowest the heart of men, show us which of these two. We're reading to 26. Next verse. That he may take part of this ministry and apostleship from which Judas by transgression fell by transgression not preordination he's losing out on the ministry was not preordination he used the power of his choices to destroy the potential to be called apostle judas only god knows what else we would have learned about god from his apostleship are we together last verse 26 now 
it says and they gave forth their lots and the lord fell on matthias and he was numbered with the 11 apostles question do you see there that matthias matthias was not out of the 12 people jesus chose he did not choose matthias to be the 12. is that true yes but the people came and said because someone has created a vacuum in destiny we must pray and say lord we cannot allow this vacuum be like that let someone fill that vacuum may nobody replace you in the name of jesus christ the position and the place that god has earmarked for you i'm saying it again may god not wait and wait and wait and wait and find out that that vacuum is there destroying others other people's destinies wasting that god will have to take someone and replace you i rebuke that thing from your life in jesus name nobody will take your bishop rick in the name of jesus can i tell you the truth there are people on earth today that the assignment they are living today is not the original script for them they were so faithful in their own god still added the assignment of unfaithful people and multiplied grace upon their lives it is true that a man can start this is the course of destiny that god prepares for you but because of the unfaithfulness and unseriousness of another person do you know that if you do not live out purpose and destiny, everybody whose destiny was connected to you will also have to wait. And God will not punish innocent people because of your refusal to rise. So God will have to look for a willing vessel. And where there is no willing vessel, he will find somebody who is already walking and say, can I trust you and give you a greater anointing and still measure a thousand cubits for you? Because in these end times, you will see people who are serving tables later become evangelists. And you are wondering what happened? What is the relationship between welfare and the crusade ground? The person was doing his assignment in welfare very well. But the person who should be in that crusade ground was wasting his time. And God said, I cannot delay. I can't punish people like this. I can't allow souls to be dying. Whereas the person with that mantle is not rising. You will see an ordinary person working in the welfare department, just prophetically speaking, carry an anointing that was not in the original script of his life. Every man was born for a reason. Fact number two, your destiny is predetermined by God, but it will take your choices and your decisions to enter into the experience of it or to miss out in it and sadly destiny can be aborted destiny can be aborted keys let me give you the keys now I'm going to give you six of them then I will teach on something very very powerful that I believe is an explanation to many people's seasons in destiny and then we'll pray if God is blessing you already say amen. amen before I continue I'd like you to lay your hands on your head and say Lord I'm still available if for any reason something about my life is beginning to make you rethink your confidence about me I am asking oh God that I am still available by your mercy I am still available someone pray I am still available I am still available I am still available I still can be trusted for someone you may be praying and say Lord in spite of everything wasting my time and wasting my years I am still available may your mercy still give me a chance to life Lord if you're healing someone in this nation don't do it without me don't do it without me lord if you're lifting someone in this nation don't do it without me ah. don't do it without me lord if you're raising someone in this nation don't do it without me 
is someone still praying one minute you are laying your hands on your head and say father nothing will take my place in life i will not stand to watch another person fulfill my assignment because of unfaithfulness because of carelessness i intend to fulfill that which is in the volume of the book for me in the name of jesus the son of the living god please sit down and write lend your destiny your attention now i want to give you six keys really about seven number one are you ready the first key if you want to fulfill your glorious destiny in christ the first non-negotiable key is discovery you have to discover and find your place you must find your place and you must be very aware of god's prophetic blueprint for your life hebrews chapter 10 and verse 7 let's walk with a few scriptures media let's walk together hebrews 10 7 lo i come in the volume of the book as it is written of me to do thy will O god so where do you find where it was written concerning you in the volume of the book apostle where do i find it it is written concerning you in the volume of the book if you throw away the book You've thrown away the revelation of your destiny too. You throw away the book. You throw away the revelation of your destiny. Where do we find our destinies in Christ? It is in the volume of the book. Are we together? Very powerful. Proverbs chapter 25 and verse 2. Proverbs 25 and verse 2. Let's read it together. Very powerful scripture. Ready? One to read. It is the glory of God to conceal a thing, but the honor of kings to search out a matter. Everybody say, search out. Mm, that it is the glory of God to conceal a thing, but the honor of kings to search it out. How do I find my destiny? Search it out. You search it out with scripture. This is very powerful. There are three principal channels as revealed from scripture that reveal our place of destiny and purpose in life. There are many but three principles. Number one, the word of God. Like I said, the volume of the book, the word of God. Number two, your abilities and your giftings. Please write it down. Your abilities and your giftings are pointers to your purpose and pointers to your destiny your abilities and your giftings and can i be sincere with you every time you do not connect your gift and your ability to purpose satan is going to use it everybody you see who satan is using mightily it is god's gift in that person satan is using it's not like satan gave the person the gift satan found a very effective tool in the life of that person but not connected to purpose generally speaking you see anything that is not connected to purpose does not have value in itself the value of anything is with respect to its connection to purpose and destiny so just obtaining things and not connecting them to purpose will only be acquisitions that will lead to futility it must be connected to purpose is someone learning you find your place in destiny number one from the word of god you find your place in destiny number two by examining your abilities and your giftings there's something god has put from within your spirit that should be used david your ability to sling and to throw the sling with uncanny mastery is not just a a hobby uh -uh. The, the courage is given you to be able to tear the lion and the bear. It's not for nothing. 
your music acumen the ability to be able to sing keep it because one day you will write psalms and hymns and even spiritual songs listen you must make a commitment tonight that everything god has put within me i must identify it it is amazing how that so many people have not taken the time to carefully and gratefully search out the many valuable abilities and giftings that God has put within their spirit. Anytime you do not discover your giftings and the things that are valuable within you, you know what Satan would do? He would make you feel less of yourself and you will begin to admire people that you do not even have, who do not even have the, the components of value that is within you. There is nobody who does not have an ability from God. Hallelujah. Is someone learning? Very powerful. One of, our, one of our little ones came the other time. I think I was teaching in school of ministry. And something very interesting happened. The young lady came to me and she came and tapped me and said that they were listening to my message. And she told, my, she told her mother that apostle is not pronouncing purpose well that is purpose not purpose i was watching the girl i said oh dear you see now In my mind i said all right so may god raise her to become a public speaker or become a woman of god i mean she's already there if at that age so she came and she was trying to she was trying to correct me to let me know that this is how they pronounce it properly i said ah these are the people who went to school now are we together let me tell you where most of you buried your giftings it came because of the tragedy of your foundation did you hear what I said the tragedy of an inaccurate foundation some of the giftings that were finding expression it was the Holy Spirit revealing them to let those around us know that this noise making ability is not just talkativeness there is something in it is being mismanaged but this is a baby revealing something. There were children with different abilities that if parents had the discernment to identify. Did you know that is the awareness of these giftings that should help the parents direct the children eventually on what they should study or become? Unfortunately, many people buried their gifts to be able to honor the desire of parents. And I'm saying this respectfully so. There are people who are wallowing in destiny with certificates and degrees and several qualifications and there is nothing in it that is related to purpose and destiny. Some of the people you see that excel, even academically, in many cases, those people found themselves either by favor or just pure luck practicing and studying things that are in sync with the abilities that are within them so it's like a fish swimming in water but there are people who are beds but they've suffocated you in water and say you must stay there some of you the pain of your childhood some of you all kinds of things that have happened to you poverty suffering has buried away potentials but in the name of jesus if lazarus could come forth i speak to that dormant gift i speak to that ability that man of god that prophetess that entrepreneur that leader joseph that king that queen in the name of jesus you must come back to life now you must come back to life now please sit down only God knows how many authors are dead within you who should write books that will mentor nations. Only God knows how many people, potentials locked up. Some of us, because of our backgrounds, someone, some person, somewhere, even if well intentioned, continue to minister to you that you do not have the power to become that which god has designed for you and you believed it some of us respectfully speaking the kinds of schools we went to and the teachers around us they use maybe your academic gradings and they began to call you names that made you to permanently bury your giftings can i tell you your giftings and your abilities a gentleman last week i think he was 
and i've received so many i don't know how many of my photos they do portraits they do all kinds of things with my photos and and i'm so grateful for the people who are thoughtful to have done that and a gentleman he came in i think from kaduna state i was just praying for people here and then this guy i think is almost the size of this 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 uh, pulpit very beautiful he he drew it with his hand and i mean you uh, it's it's about it should be it should be arguably one of the best portraits of myself that i've seen and yet this guy just presented it to me and i said my god and there are many 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 people who will pay millions of naira to someone if they can find a person who does this but you will be surprised almost all the people within that person's family they just know that he's carelessly doing something do you know let me tell you africa we must wake up the 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 spirit that makes us to destroy great visions at infancy i curse that spirit in jesus name <laughs> hallelujah discovery so number one the word of god helps you to discover your place your purpose your destiny number two your abilities and your giftings inherent abilities write them down know them number three service one of the most powerful channels and platforms to find your place in destiny is service even service in the house of god there are many people today who may not really know what it is that is within them until service gives them an opportunity to reveal it is someone learning very very important number two let's hurry up what is the second key if you want to actualize destiny are you ready determination don't downplay these keys you are receiving many have trivialized it to the detriment of their destinies determination you must be determined to succeed what is determination unbendedness in pursuit that means i am not giving up until i see my destiny become what god showed me in that vision you may weep but please don't stop till you look just like him you may cry but please don't stop till your life looks like him you may weep but please don't stop till your life looks like him you may fall but please don't stop till you look just like him determination philippians chapter 3 please and verse 13 unbendedness in pursuit that means you have set your face like a flame 313 philippians brethren i count not myself to have apprehended he says but this one thing i do you know people of purpose and destiny because at every point in their life there is the one thing they are doing people who do too many things they are not just busy bodies sometimes doing too many things is a revelation of purposelessness this one thing i do forgetting those things that are behind and reaching forth unto those things which are before i love this next verse it says i press this for me is a definition of determination i press towards the mark i press towards the mark i press towards the mark that means nothing will stop me if god has said there is an entrepreneur god has said there is a man of god god has said there is a worship minister to sing his praises to the nations then i press towards the mark can i tell you determination requires courage because for the most part of your journey you will be alone don't expect people to believe in you at the infancy of your vision and don't blame them if they don't believe in you it is at the end the vision speaks 
so for the most part of your journey to purpose and destiny you will walk alone but find comfort that though i walk through the valley of the shadow of death he says i fear no evil for thou not for you people for thou there is just one person you need to verify is he here with me apostle i'm unable to rise because nobody believes in me you are not alone keep moving apostle but i think people like you when did they start liking me you go and find out there is nobody who they start liking and clapping for at the beginning every vision looks like a failure from the beginning it takes determination your determination will force failure to become success so don't think it is anything special happening to you apostle this ministry is not working whose own do you think worked people forced it to work members don't come to my church <laughs> my brother you need to have determination by the spirit of god all this free lunch mentality is why we don't have champions in the kingdom a crave for sympathy and endorsement you must sustain the courage to walk alone but when you win i assure you you will not clap alone can i tell you this there are few people in life who will be around those who are starting they are called burden bearers and if you've read your bible they are not many that's why i told you to pray for them but i'm telling you you must trust the holy spirit as the chief burden bearer and be sure that if he is there fire on do you know what determination is if i perish i perish many of us have plan b plan c plan to plan z you will not be able to go forward that way winners are people who don't have plan b lord i've set my hand on this floor and i will press determination apostle but they are laughing at me most of the people who are laughing at you will be your strongest witnesses when you become great because they will say we saw it i don't like this man but i can tell you i saw him can i tell you this i'm praying tonight that god will take away this chicken heart of fear fear of what people will say what will people say take that thing away and you need a lion's heart if you want to be great whether you are jesus or satan people will talk they talk about jesus they talk about satan who are you that you you are in between somewhere whether you backslide whether you maintain your work they will still talk about you listen we live in a world that is so obsessed with it's, it's important to preserve your integrity and all of that but let me tell you the truth don't allow yourself to become a slave to people's opinion what does god desire for my life and you fire on i know god has called me to be a man of god and someone looks at you and says now nah, for you you preach a sermon and for the first time i slept in church no problem let him mock you accept it as a positive challenge don't fight everybody you accept it and move forward and say no problem after all peter too they tried to pray for somebody and remember what happened but the time came his shadow everybody said determination can i tell you the truth get away from that theology that makes you believe that if god is with you it is just free lunch all the way uh -uh. you've heard it is a popular saying in the body of christ and it's been so for many years that faith does not just make things easy the assignment of faith is to make things possible not easy whether it is easy or not provided it becomes possible that is the assignment of faith everybody said determination now lay your hands on your head again don't be tired this night or you are praying father i obtain grace this fear factor oh god take it out of my life give me the heart of a lion in the name of jesus who said you cannot build the house in the name of jesus who said you cannot move from a tenant to a landlord in the name of jesus who said it is in your destiny to suffer for the rest of your life who said you cannot rise to the highest peak in your career who said you cannot become a man of god with results don't let your lack of determination cooperate with naysayers you need determination 
will you fail yes sir how many times as many as your destiny will require but you have to obtain grace god is speaking to someone tonight shake off that limitation shake off the excuses i obtain grace to be determined hallelujah god bless you please sit down go and ask any great man you know today whether in the secular whether in ministry if they are honest enough and they don't want to lie or just flatter you they will tell you uneasy lies the head that wears the crown are we together many of us are too fearful to do anything significant you've been in this abuja i know we're talking destiny but let it adds up to all of these things you've been in this abuja 10 years 20 years you've not had the courage to go out and even go and look where a plot of land is and you laugh at yourself and say no 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 let me tell you if you don't take that step of courage i'm sorry to say it. i don't mean to insult you but you will die a tenant believe me it takes courage the signs follow they don't go before most of you who are waiting for things to walk there are times you have to close your eyes and walk on that water so what if you fall jesus is there he would take responsibility for your obeying him everybody say determination there are many people who come to me for prayer and most times and lovingly speaking I look at these people and they expect some magic to happen just because apostle is praying no. many of you your dreams have been in notebooks for decades and you have left it there and to your shock you will watch somebody leaving it out and you'll be angry and say, ah, ah, is this not the thing because it's not only you that saw it when the spirit of revelation was distributing those things his first confess have ah, but i saw this business idea what did you do about it someone saw it and got up and said listen i don't have a father mother but i have the lord jesus and let's go determination let me tell you something believers and i we men of god must take responsibility for proposing that kind of message we have taught a there is a dimension of the teaching of faith and the ministry of the Holy Spirit that needs to be balanced when you are teaching people about achievement because of the excellency of the personality of the Holy Spirit and and the the how how powerful the law of faith is we make it look as if the moment you take a step and you are determined if you do fail it is because God is not with you let me tell you this even if an angel appears before you and says I have ordained you to be a real estate champion in Abuja receive the grace you can fall down and roll under the anointing and get up and your first deal can be because there are many things you don't know your first deal can even be a scam and yet you go to God in prayer and God says I, I don't even know what you are talking about all I know is that what I said is still what I've said many believers have this superstitious belief that just because you fail people will come and say this business did you really hear god and you go back in shame and you go back in regret there is difference between failure as an event and failure as a person he says rejoice not over me my enemies it is true that jesus died but for how many days did he die don't talk about the dead jesus when he's already back to life imagine that jesus rose up from the grave and sat there inside the inside the tomb and says i'm angry because everybody ran away from me you better come and carry me out of this place i don't know how many days would have been counting for redemption as soon as he came back to life he had no time the bible said he rolled the grave clothes and he had he had what to do he didn't see the disciples and say you guys three days i suffered i was in that tomb alone he had no time for that discussion let me tell you this determine people don't weep for too long if they go through something they can stand learn from it readjust and fire on determine people are those that if one door closes they force another door to open listen 
don't just don't just be excited for nothing this is what it takes to be a champion in the kingdom determination apostle right now i'm in school i don't have a father i don't have a mother where will my school fees go from just read your book start from there read your book if you don't read and the school fees comes two weeks to the exam you will still fail even though the miracle has come do the part you can do and leave god to do what you cannot do god will not do what you can do i don't have the money to buy the land but do you know where the land is that one does not require money is god challenging you apostle i'm just waiting i don't know who will give me money oh let me build my church <laughs> who will give you money do you need money to fast do you need money to pray do you need money to call upon the name of the lord do you need money to carry fire start from there leave the issue of bills start from there solve fire first the fire problem then the bill problem will be solved Number three, is God speaking to someone? So that respectfully speaking, some of this wrong understanding we have about destiny, that just because you are in Christ, you will just be a bed of roses. It's why many, many believers are failures. We pray in tongues, but we still fail. And let me tell you, when you see somebody in a season of pain and failure, don't be too quick to point hands and laugh at the person and say you didn't hear God even if the person did not hear God he honorably felt in that pain God will come in his mercy and visit the person number three who is learning tonight so the first is discovery the second is determination the third are you ready go for knowledge get wisdom you want to actualize destiny thank god for discovery thank god for the determination the willingness to press in spite of but you need knowledge destiny is knowledge driven destiny is knowledge driven Oh, this is very important. This is very important. Ecclesiastes chapter 10 and verse 15. Three scriptures quickly. Please give it to us. Ecclesiastes chapter 10 and verse 15. Ready? Please read. One to read. The labor of the foolish wearied every one of them. Why? Because he knoweth not how to go to the city. Not because there is no path to the city. It is painful to see your destiny and yet not know the requisite level of knowledge. Every result I have taught you in the kingdom, every pathway you need to take, there is a requisite level of knowledge, wisdom that it takes for you to actualize it. Now, let me tell you the truth. It is in this area of accessing knowledge that men are separated from boys because knowledge is not a gift you buy the truth it will cost you we live in a world where we are obsessed with gifts give it to me make it happen why don't you write all the points for my destiny and come and spoon feed me with it unfortunately it does not work like that everybody say buy the truth you must go for knowledge very very important Proverbs chapter 24, please, from verse 3 and 4. Still on the third point. Go for knowledge. Get wisdom. The Bible says through wisdom. Please give us Amplified. I love the rendition of Amplified, of this very scripture. Proverbs 24, 3 and 4. Look up, please. It says through skillful and godly wisdom is a house, a life, a home, a family built and by understanding it is established on a sound and a good foundation next verse through knowledge and by knowledge shall its chambers of every area be filled with all precious 
and pleasant riches somebody say knowledge say understanding say wisdom the major the major activity during the preparatory phase of your destiny will be this right there getting wisdom getting knowledge your spirit opens to me the treasures of your word and i will forever sing your praise your spirit opens to me the treasures of your word and i will forever sing your praise can i tell you this the bible says in proverbs chapter 18 and verse 1 it says through desire a man having separated himself that he seeketh and intermeddleth with all wisdom you need to go for knowledge buy books before shoes get knowledge before you start getting the adorning of clothes it is painful to look great and yet be empty unfortunately unfortunately we live in a world today that does not mind people can be as empty as a keg and yet you decorate it and it looks so full i rather look i rather look carry a physical fashion that makes you underestimate me and then be full and rich within than to look so successful and visionary and then when you come in you find out that it's an empty gong someone shout god forbid can i tell you this you need to invest in knowledge you don't invest in knowledge in a hurry you need to sit down what does it take oh god you are giving me a global ministry as a man of god a global prophetic ministry a global pastoral ministry yes lord i have received it but a global ministry comes with a global burden i need wisdom spirituality leadership organization finances i need to understand this i obtain grace when others are snoring and sleeping away their destiny you are awake lord i obtain grace your eyes are sleepy it looks like two people are sitting on your eyes you shake it away and say no way i'm going far i obtain grace may the spirit of laziness be far from us in the name of jesus may the spirit the destiny destroying spirit of laziness may it be far from us there are many people who will tell you they want to be preachers they don't even read up to one hour per week I'm telling you sincerely, even if there are no demons, you will still fail. Because demons are not the only, demons only account for about 20% or so of real failure. A major part of failure is ignorance or insufficient knowledge. I've taught you here, if you scored 35%, you didn't get zero and yet you still failed. Is that true? If the cutoff mark is 50 and you get 48, you didn't get zero, but you will still stand at the same place with those who got zero. Take away shame from your life by investing in knowledge. It is not good to look dull and be dull. Now, I'm not saying this mocking you. Knowledge is, a, is an equalizer. You may not come from a privileged family, I agree. You may not have a personal that is very inviting and you know, but let knowledge equalize you. It's a bailout system. Take away shame from your life and stop all the petty jealousy and sit down. Go for knowledge. I don't speak English very well, I agree. I may not be as beautiful or handsome as people would want to be. I may not be like that celebrity, but the one God gave you, your brain is healthy. Use it. In the name of Jesus, sit down. Buy books. 
don't go online just browsing profitless things that will not i've told you this thing and i've said it with with the sincere heart of a shepherd not to pry into your privacy i am telling you most people the time if they take half the time they use roaming around social media in a profitless way and invest it in constructive knowledge i assure you by god they will not remain at that level some of you know what is happening in everybody's life except your own destiny that should not be are we together say i receive grace to go for knowledge apostle what do i learn about you see when you know where you are going you now find out those who are going that direction and you begin to study their mindsets and study the first kind of knowledge you need is the awareness of your current state that itself is a miracle do you know that if you if you are aware that you are in need that knowledge of your inadequacy is already a miracle are we together not knowing that you have a problem is a serious problem itself follow them who through faith and patience what did they study god has called you to be a kingdom financier you can be jumping till rapture happens and you miss out your assignment and even miss rapture if you are not careful and yet you there you, you know we talk is cheap I, i'm saying this with with, with uh, i hope i hope i'm not um i, I hope we're still friends please sit down please sit down go back home and sit down carry your Bible and look for one book apostle I'm in ministry what book should I get even if you don't know it, at least go to a bookstore just roam around there and see Holy Ghost I'm now here I left my house and the Holy Spirit will take you somewhere I don't have money oh, at least search nobody will query you for searching around and somebody will come and say you look like a determined young man you are looking at that book it's a nice book i read it pick it up you'll get both a relationship and favor because you took a step go for knowledge till today i study like i don't know anything because truly without flattery with respect to where god is taking me there are many things i do not know and so i sit down and i study i study i study study to show yourself approved unto god is that in your bible a workman please let me tell you this if you are a man of god i submit to you with all due respect forget about you be ready for empty pews if you are not rich in knowledge the generation the world we live in today is the world of serious people a man will not carry his wife and children and their destiny and come and be part of your vision and sit down every week to listen to nonsense no people love you but they love their destinies nobody is ready to waste his time like that to travel from one nation to come and let me also challenge everyone career people please in the name of jesus go for knowledge go for knowledge find out what you don't know about and find out how to learn from it don't make the same mistake two times apostle i'm broke do you know how to be rich eh, listen to one message like that is it fair that you just carelessly listen to a 20 minute message and actually believe you should be a millionaire from it whereas people people who have been working even in the civil service for 30 years are still struggling to stand and you just cheapen life like that no there are many of us who do not know the real cost of being great we have downplayed the cost of greatness and reduced it just because of things like favor. Don't forget, by the grace of God, the person talking to you, I understand favor. Wave laziness goodbye. 
and force it to wave you back that you you stand in the name of jesus some of you from this night gather if i come to your house i don't don't show me the cars and the houses those things are transitory let me see what you're doing with your mind let me see let you can be in that one room with that trouser that is as cheap as whatever with people laughing at you don't worry show me what you are doing and i can tell you where you are going there are many many young people in our nation who are not going anywhere they believe that destiny will just open up because of a bold face it takes more than that it takes capacity everybody say knowledge everybody say wisdom and can I tell you this in pursuit of destiny if God ever by any means makes the job easier for you by granting you access to the minds of those who know what they are saying please don't trivialize it listen don't sit down with a champion and be tampering the equation you are not there yet you don't have the results you see for some people it is not the absence of helpers or knowledge it is sheer pride Africa for instance you'll find people who have no result they are broke they are poor they are oppressed they have no anointing they have no influence yet they want to teach you on everything pertaining influence anointing prosperity let's respect results are we together when i sit in the presence of people who have what i do not have i don't argue even if i don't entirely agree i have to honor the presence of the results that is before me and listen number number four are you ready the fourth key spend time praying for your life and your destiny that is the fourth key you want to actualize destiny you must spend time invest time in fact that's the word invest time praying for your life and your destiny oh may god help you believe this thing i'm teaching in the name of jesus christ you must spend time praying for your life it's good to intercede i've taught you on intercession it's good to pray for people but there are times you have to honestly zoom the attention on you and your destiny and invest time generate energy praying for your life and praying for your destiny apostle but i thought you were praying for me i will continue to pray for you as a man of god but even jesus is praying for you even for those who are suffering he's interceding for them too if you don't take responsibility over your destiny and pray till you tear off the gates listen especially for those of you if you come from a background where you know that you are the first to do what you are about to do you are the one who breaks the iron gate you better pray you better pray grandfather tried it and died grandmother tried it and died siblings tried it and died now you are the one that iron gate has never been broken you must pray the one who is grandfather or grandmother at least open part of the gate is just for him to finish opening it that one's life is easier for you there is a chain on it and there is a spirit holding the chain lord i will not fail in life days become weeks weeks become months what are you doing i am praying you are just lazying around don't call prayer lazying around there is vision and purpose connected to it somebody say i will pray one more time say i will pray matthew chapter 4 please from verse 1 this is jesus preparing to begin his ministry jesus was led up of the spirit into the wilderness to be tempted of the devil the bible says next verse when he had what fasted 40 days and 40 nights you would think that because he was jesus he had already listen look at jesus he discovered already his place he was determined to fulfill it he had spent time getting knowledge from age 12 he was in the temple and you would think just because he had acquired knowledge it was over the bible says he prayed and fasted 40 days and 40 nights and not even hunger stopped him 
I don't know any great man. I may be wrong. I'm learning too. But I don't know any great man, especially in the kingdom and in ministry, who cannot point seasons of his life where he fasted the kind of fast that even the devil will look with shock and say, ah, this person, you have energy. And it's easier to fast when you have not made it yet. That's why it's good to, because all the distractions are less. How much do you have that temptation will come? You, you focus and fast. Yes, sir. Whether you fasted or not, you were not even going to eat very well after all. So you, you use the opportunity. You are praying, giving yourself an excuse. Are we together? Mark chapter 1, please. Mark chapter 1 from verse 35. Mark chapter 1, 35. This was Jesus after a busy day. He had started ministry. So we see him praying even before ministry would start. Now ministry started already and he was doing so well. Morning till night, busy schedules. And the Bible says in the morning, rising up a great while. Everybody say discipline. Hmm. He went out and departed into a solitary place and there prayed. There prayed. You must pray. There are forces that will try to fight you from starting. If they cannot succeed, they will be waiting for you at the gate of honor so that they will bring you shame don't you think because you started the devil will fold his arms the bible said he left jesus for a season every great man here listen let me tell you if you think because you are great and everything is working everything is fine think again go and ask there is a skill that maintains greatness one of it is the consistent fortification of yourself with prayer people are praying for you but you must pray for yourself because when satan sees that you are high up there he will begin to scheme things to make sure because he knows that in your coming down is the coming down of many so instead of attacking two million people he will attack you there are battles that you have no business fighting but when you become great is a battle that must involve you please obtain grace to pray everybody say i will pray Apostle, thank God, me, I'm not in ministry, I'm just in business. Pray more. The king of Tyre is sitting where you are there. That is his headquarters. Have you heard about Tyre and Sidon? Tyre and Sidon. You must pray. The devil will not commit millions and billions to your hands when he knows that your heart is already inclined to the kingdom. Now, Go and ask people who practice occultism. Before they become wealthy, they come under all kinds of oaths. Oaths with blood, incisions to say, listen, these are the do's and don'ts as far as using this money is concerned. You can't, there are wealthy people today who cannot give you more than 10,000. They are not greedy. It is based on the oath that brought that wealth. To the point that even their physical parents or siblings can be in the hospital, dead bed, but they are not allowed to bring that money you think they are greedy it is the condition that was given to them that's why the bible says the blessing of the lord make it rich and adds no sorrow are we together spend time praying first thessalonians chapter 3 second thessalonians chapter 3 from verse 1 and 2 second thessalonians chapter 3 from verse 1 and 2 finally brethren pray for us that the word of the lord may have free course and be glorified even as it is with you verse 2 and that we be delivered from unreasonable and wicked men for all men have not faith do not assume that just because everybody is laughing at or laughing with you they mean you well this is a world that is full of wickedness the bible says this world is a habitation of cruelty are we together 
why must this family be rising why must this man of god be rising why must this sister be rising why must this politician be rising why must this career person be rising look at jesus innocently bringing glory to the father and a few people came together and said look we have to do something about this man he's stealing our show oh but prayer is powerful you can get into that control room and begin to make things he said has thou commanded thy morning please obtain grace to pray for your destiny in the name of jesus invest time praying invest time praying invest time praying don't pray out of fear pray as a not just as a principle of survival but your prayer will give room for you to keep making progress number five are you ready is god helping us tonight let's hurry up number five embrace a life of competence and excellence point number five you want to actualize destiny you must embrace a life of competence and excellence three scriptures very quickly proverbs 22 29 popular scripture embrace a life of competence and excellence it says seest thou a man diligent in his business leaves you with an assurance he shall stand before kings he shall not stand before average ordinary or mean men you want to rise beyond the average in life and destiny for the sake of the kingdom you must be diligent a diligent preacher will be a great preacher a diligent businessman will be a great businessman a diligent politician will be a great politician everybody say competence what is competence mastery we just finished a series on striving for mastery listen to it again you must become a master at something otherwise shame and reproach will always be within the corridor of your destiny make up your mind that you are not given the assignment of being and knowing everything but as far as the things that pertain to the area of your call and destiny is concerned please hold it with mastery and take away shame from your life genesis chapter 41 we'll jump the verses because of time give us verse 14 and then we'll jump to 29 down to 33 and then 37 we're jumping we're examining the life of joseph ready 14 then pharaoh sent and called joseph and they brought him hastily out of the dungeon and he shaved himself and changed his raiment and came unto pharaoh to 29 now 29 to 33 behold there come seven years of plenty he's interpreting the king's dream now throughout all the land of egypt we're reading to 33 uh-huh next verse and there shall arise after them seven years of famine and all the plenty shall be forgotten in the land of egypt and the famine shall consume the land 31 and the plenty shall not be known in the land by reason of the famine following for it shall be very grievous two more verses and for that the dream was doubled unto pharaoh twice it is because the thing is established by god and god will shortly bring it to pass the last verse and then we we'll jump to 37 now therefore look at him bringing a solution now let pharaoh look out for a man discreet and wise and set him over the land of egypt 37 and the thing was good in the eyes of pharaoh and in the eyes of all his servants next verse and pharaoh said unto his servants can we find such a one as this is a man in whom the spirit of god is next verse and pharaoh said unto joseph for as much as god has shown thee all this there is none so discreet and wise as thou may that be your testimony in the name of jesus christ that we will search and search and honestly come to the conclusion that you are truly exceptional that we will say your kind is rare in the name of jesus christ next verse please 
and Pharaoh, okay, thou shalt be over my house, and according unto my word shall all my people be ruled. Look at instant honor that came because of competence and excellence. It says, only in the throne will I be greater than thou. Next verse. We are reading to 46. And Pharaoh said unto Joseph, See, I have set thee over all the land of Egypt. And Pharaoh took off his ring from his hand and put it upon Joseph's hand and arrayed him in vestures of fine linen and put a gold chain about his neck. And he made him to ride in the second chariot which he had. And they cried before him, bowed the knee, and made him ruler over all the land of Egypt. Three more verses. And Pharaoh said to Joseph, I am Pharaoh, and without thee shall no man lift up his hand or foot in all the land of Egypt. Look at this. And Pharaoh called Joseph's name Zavnath Paniah, and he gave him to wife Asenath, the daughter of Potiphar, the priest of On. And Joseph went out over all the land of Egypt. Last verse. And Joseph was how old? Wow. And Joseph was 30 years old when he stood before the king of Egypt. When they put the ring when Joseph began to do exploits at a national level, he was 30 years old. That means there is no excuse. And for those of you who are saying, ah, 30 years, okay, that's old. What of Joash, who was king at age 8? Josiah, king at age 9. They were all kings, as small as they were. A child is not just a child in age. A child is a child in knowledge. Are we together now? Yes. You must embrace a life of competence and excellence. Two more. Number six. Am I right on that? Number six. Be disciplined and focused. This is a big one. I can spend the entire night dealing with this issue of discipline and focus. There is no glorious destiny for any man and any woman that will compromise on the power of discipline and focus. Isaiah chapter 50, please. Isaiah chapter 50 and verse 7. Let's hurry up media. 50 and verse 7, Isaiah. For the Lord will help me, therefore I shall not be confounded. Therefore I have set my face like a flint and I know that I shall not be ashamed. Second Timothy chapter 2 and verse 4. Second Timothy chapter 2 and verse 4. It says, No man that warreth entangleth himself with the affairs of this life, that he may please him who hath chosen him to be a soldier. He's given an impression that if you make up your mind that you are a soldier, then you have to adopt the, the discipline of a military man. Hebrews chapter 12 and verse 1. Hebrews 12 and verse 1. Wherefore, seeing also that we are compassed with so great a cloud of witnesses, let us lay aside, say lay aside, every weight and the sin that doth easily beset us and to run with patience the race that is set before us. There are two things he says to lay aside, sin and weight. You can lay aside sin and not lay aside weight. Weight is anything that is unnecessary as far as the journey is concerned. There are many good things in your life you must be able to cut away from. You don't have to cut away from evil things alone. There are many good things that are not profitable for your destiny. Are we together? Yes, sir. There are many good things you are going to have to say no to for the sake of where you are going. Many good things that you have to say no to. Number seven, and that will lead me into a very important subtopic, and then we'll pray. Are you ready? The seventh point if you want to actualize destiny, you must develop 
endurance you must develop endurance i will define for you what endurance is you must develop endurance are you ready i define endurance as the ability to stand and survive pain and pressure while maintaining focus endurance the ability to stand and survive pain and pressure while maintaining focus endurance the ability to stand and survive pain and pressure while maintaining focus this one key here dear people of god if you have six over seven and this is the key you failed you will still abort destiny strangely endurance james chapter one james chapter one from verse two and three james chapter one from verse two and three my brethren he says count it all joy when you fall into diverse temptations knowing this verse three that the trying of your faith worketh patience in fact let's read verse four it says but let patience have her perfect work that ye may be perfect and entire wanting nothing everybody say endurance there are two reasons i have seen why people generally in spite of the fact that they work in keeping with these other keys while they are unable to really maximize destiny and become all that god has ordained them to be number one is excuses they will always give excuses and you see to one who is determined to find a reason not to rise you will always find one excuses and then number two the second reason is violating the law of process i want to end my teaching tonight by teaching us something about the law of process please open up your heart and open your spirit because for some of you this will be an answer right now to your prayer are you ready to pray one more time lord open my eyes yet again open my eyes for the sake of my destiny for the sake of all those who are looking up to me make sure you are praying those following online azaria family and those connecting across the globe make sure your heart is open pray let it be from the depth of your heart open my eyes hallelujah write this down as a subtopic the law of process I need to teach you this very quickly mark chapter 4 please mark chapter 4 many great people from verse 26 have aborted destiny because they do not understand this mystery of the kingdom called process and he said so is the kingdom of god as if a man should cast seed into the ground next verse next verse Miss let's work together and should sleep and rise night and day and the seed should spring and grow up he knoweth not how 28 now for the earth bringeth forth fruit of herself but how does it happen first the blade is it in your bible then the air after that the full corn in the air we're reading to 32 but when the fruit is brought forth immediately he put it in the sickle because the harvest is come 30 and he said whereunto shall we liken the kingdom of god or with what comparison shall we compare it it is like the grain of mustard seed which when it is sown in the earth is less than all the seeds that be in the earth last verse but when it is sown it groweth up and becometh greater than all the herbs and shooteth out great branches so that the fowls of the air may lodge under the shadow 
of it. I had the privilege of learning this deep law of destiny very early in life. The law of process. Write this down please everyone. You must be tested and proven in order to be honored by God. You must be tested and proven in order to be honored by God. Deuteronomy chapter 8, we're looking at scriptures from verse 11. You must be tested and proven in order to be honored by God. There is nobody who will taste of genuine kingdom honor as far as destiny and the kingdom is concerned until and unless you are tested and you are proven. We we'll begin our reading from verse 11. Beware that thou forget not the Lord thy God in not keeping his commandments and his judgments and his statutes which I command you this day. Lest when thou hast eaten and art full and art built goodly houses and dwell therein and when thy herds and flocks multiply and thy silver and thy gold is multiplied and all that thou hast is multiplied 14 then thy heart shall be lifted up this is why god needs to test and prove people it's a tendency in the heart of all men without exception and forget the lord thy god which brought thee forth out of the land of egypt from the house of bondage 15 who led thee through that great and terrible wilderness wherein were fiery serpents scorpions drought where there was no water who brought thee forth water out of the rock of flint 16. it says who fed thee let's read 16 together ready one to read who fed thee in the wilderness with manna which thy fathers knew not why that he might humble thee and that he might prove thee to what end to do thee good at thy latter end let me tell you sincerely god tests people god proves people even men prove people before they lift them there is no responsible man there is no responsible leader there is no responsible father who will not test and prove people to ascertain their capacity and their capabilities before lifting them and even their tendencies you must be tested and psalm 66 verse 12 psalm 66 and verse 12 thou hast caused men to ride over our heads <laughs> we went through fire and through water but thou broughtest us into a wealthy place but before we got there you caused men to ride over our heads we went through fire and we went through water which one is better fire or water <laughs> Are we together? It's like saying which one is better to die by shooting or to die by an arrow. All of them will cause something to your body and you will still die. You cause men to ride over our heads. We went through water and through fire, but the same you brought us into a wealthy place process is very powerful there will always be seasons in a man's life where god will be proving you to prune every tendency that can destroy and abort your glorious future and let me tell you the truth that is about the hardest face in the life of a believer because at those points i taught you this already that is when you experience what we call the silence of god you will live in the silence of god once and again and if you do not understand that you are being proven you will waste that season and you will find out that the destiny that was prophesied over you would never even come to pass number two 
the second thing you have to know about process is that it takes time for true success and your destiny to manifest no matter how you hurry destiny it takes time for true success and it takes time for destiny to manifest hebrews chapter 6 and verse 15 i want us to read it in concert when we see it displayed everyone ready please look up one to read and so after he had patiently endured he obtained the promise the he being abraham and so after he had patiently endured he obtained the promise what does process do in your life i want to give you about four or so reasons and then we'll end it and pray for tonight about four or five reasons are you ready number one why do i have to go through process with god number one process tests your loyalty and your commitment to fulfilling your destiny process will test your loyalty and your commitment not just to god your loyalty and your commitment to fulfilling your destiny are you that determined to make it process will test and even prune your loyalty and your commitment to fulfilling your destiny luke chapter 9 please and verse 62 luke 9 62 and jesus said unto him no man having put his hand to the plow and looking back is fit for the kingdom of god process no matter what it takes that in the name of jesus christ i have set my face on the like a flint and i will push through it may be gradual but i must become that kingdom financier it may be gradual but i must become that man of god number two what does process achieve in your life process builds patience process builds patience james chapter one two and three we read that already please just write it down for sake of time there are many people who it takes the discipline of process to bring them to a point where they can become patient in life we live in a generation of impatience fast everything we want it immediately sharp sharp and while it is true that god is a god of speed there is a difference between speed and rush god gives people speed after he has made them and built them but god does not rush people are we together isaiah chapter 43 and verse 1 and 2 very popular scripture it says fear not I have redeemed you i have called you by name thou art mine verse 2 i love verse 2 so much it says when thou passest through water i will be with you when thou passest through the river it shall not overflow you but when it gets to fire it didn't say where you pass where you run it said where you walk why do i need to walk through fire Abba God, it's enough that I'm there. I thought I would rush out. Because that fire has an assignment to roast many things away out of your life. There are things water cannot remove. <clears throat> there are things even the strength of the river cannot remove. It will take fire. And let me tell you, when you are walking through that fire, not even your tears will accelerate the pace. You will walk slowly. It will burn pride it will burn every kind of thing you will get to a point where when you get out of that fire you will be as light as a feather ready to fly some of you you are in that fire right now it is not always a demonic attack the anointing of the holy spirit was designed to fight satan not god so sometimes when you are praying and asking the anointing to fight and it's not fighting certain things it may be because it is not satan the anointing does not fight God. Process. Process. You walk through fire. Three members. Six months. 
two years three members you are angry you are offended you are saying even the people i raised now they have mega churches and god says stay i know what i'm doing when you walk through fire let me speak to someone here you may be in a season where you are fulfilling the law of process don't abort destiny obtain the grace to stay there is something that fire is doing and when it is done there is nobody who is a normal human being who will carry raw meat even if you go to the bush and you kill meat nobody will come to a restaurant just to sit down and start eating raw meat you just share a raw cow and people are just eating no it will pass through fire when you get to the kitchen in any restaurant it is hot there is no kitchen that is cold because that is where food is prepared did you hear me there is no kitchen in any restaurant that is cold the signature of any kitchen even if you are blind you will know you are in the kitchen because of fire several things on fire and while it is on fire the chef is laughing and those who need to eat they are waiting impatiently and they do not know that is fire that is responsible for their satisfaction fire they place that meat there they turn it they turn it back again they add something and turn it again and while that is happening something else is in the pot cooking and boiling and the man is laughing and it starts to change shape others change color others change texture many things happen under fire can i tell you nobody goes through fire and comes out the way you enter no no for some of you the fire will change your shape for some of you the fire will change your color spiritually for some of you the fire will change your appetite my encouragement is let the fire do its work let the fire do its work let the fire do its work it may be painful the fire may come as a temporal lack of finances let the fire do its work the fire may be having several certificates and yet it does not seem to bring you anything i'm telling you sometimes it's not the devil let the fire do its work there is good waiting for you at the end is someone learning number three so number one to test your loyalty and commitment to fulfilling your vision number two fire builds patience number three you know what fire does i mean you know what process does process helps you to appreciate the success of other people it appreciate it helps you to honor and appreciate successful people when you do not pass through fire and you don't have process you may not be able to appreciate the sacrifices and the results of others god allows us to pass through these seasons of process so that you would not downplay results when you see it can i tell you this we live in a world where it is very easy to talk when you are not the one in the football field playing you sit down outside in the stadium of life and you are watching people playing and the person misses the ball and the person is tired and breathing and you are watching and saying just this guy would have just dribbled now what is just dribbled and you would have just passed and you do not know that your own match is waiting sooner or later God puts you and in 10 minutes you are tired he says no it's 90 minutes keep going are we together it is easy to commend when you are standing outside and you are not the one actively involved so a process helps us so that we can appreciate what successful people went through whether in ministry listen as i grow in ministry and as i grow in leadership i'm cultivating a renewed regard and respect I've always known this but I'm knowing it even pragmatically you know why many times when you are teaching in conferences is pastors you see crying in front and sometimes rolling on the ground because most of them are in the middle of those things they were commentators before they started ministry after 10 years they came to the realization that you really need to know some things how about many young people 
it's easy to see our parents and those who have gone ahead of us and to mark their scripts and write all kinds of things and say this is my father i don't know where he was when all his colleagues were making it now you become a father and you are surprised you have you have bp because of his school fees of fifty thousand, and yet your father trained eight of you We ate meat only on Sunday. You, they are about to throw you out of your house, you and your wife. At least your father was able to provide that. Let me tell you this. Do not commit to people who do not go through the law of process. They will not have an appreciation and a regard for others, especially for the great. Are we together? This is very, very powerful. A very deep and powerful mystery. 2 Corinthians eleven twenty seven. 2 Corinthians eleven twenty seven. This is Paul. In fact, if we had time, we would have read the entire span. But he was saying something here. When you begin to read from verse 20 down to 29, thereabout, he said, in weariness, in painfulness, in watchings often, in hunger and thirst, in fasting in cold and nakedness he was saying don't you think i just became an apostle by luck these were some of the things i went through you see when you see great people because of the way the palace would decorate you and perfume you you will not smell like the prison again but make no mistake it was from the prison you got there are we together now yes most people who criticize and most people who are involved in talking about people it is because they do not have track record of greatness let me tell you the truth when you go through the law of process you will appreciate great people with profound respect wow this man had to go through this to become a pilot this man had to go through this to become a chartered accountant this man had to go through this there are people who will not be able to pastor 100 members effectively the trouble of 100 members will depress them till they almost plunge into depression and yet you see a man leading a ministry of thousands of people and saying, all these people they are just lucky no sometimes god helps critics by giving them opportunities the way god helps critics is by giving them what you are criticizing God will give you as a gift or your take and then you will see it as a breakthrough and by yourself there are many people who can criticize am I not also anointed say for instance and God says okay let me give you open doors and you will preach for three months non-stop at the end of it you will sit down and you will search which topic have I not preached leadership i said it the other day oh i i preached that day on abraham i've preached about him and then you will now know the man who does three services or five services or preaches about eight sermons every day and he has done it for three or four decades without fail you now know that these people have something to say are we together my uncle is such a greedy man doesn't give anybody money no problem God helps you by giving you your first five million and as soon as that five million comes somebody will say please we need a surgery it's just three million we need otherwise somebody would die and I saw you in a vision and God said I should come and seek help that's when you will know that so it's not easy like that in the vision I saw someone giving you five million is that true sir you don't know whether you should lie or tell the truth now you know what it feels when you tell people just give me money anytime and they keep giving you let me tell you the truth until you are there just keep quiet let me repeat myself until you are there wearing the shoes just keep quiet is god speaking to us <laughs> what number now number four why does god pass us through processes are you ready to create memories and experiences in our lives that will help us sustain the success that is before us to create memories yeah. 
and experiences that will help us sustain the success that is before us it is very powerful why do we go through processes why do you have to subscribe to the law of process because there is something that you go through in those seasons of pain that will help you to be able to manage greatness can i tell you ask anybody who has tasted of genuine greatness there is a skill it takes many years ago i had a dream and in that dream a man of god in this nation he was standing on stage and i was invited to come and preach i considered myself from that dream that ah how could i be given this great platform and then when i came in the dream i found out that you were not standing on the ground like this it's like you have to climb the pulpit the pulpit and stand and it was so slippery when i stood there ah i had to hold it and say is this i'm, I'm just trying to gain my footing and yet the man was standing there very easily i woke up from that dream and i said wow there is a skill to standing here it's more than just facing the pulpit there are those who didn't stand well they didn't even stand up to two years if you see people standing here all you see is not all there is so let me tell you this there are many people today respectfully speaking not to downplay your pedigree by the time you see 10 million 100 million 1 billion you will run in a way that God must ask you what he asked Adam where are you I can't find you again I can't find you again it's not only your pastor that cannot find you where are you your wife can't find you your children can't find you even your destiny cannot find you where are you so hold on if God knows that that is the weight of honor he's bringing he will subject you through a season that no matter the level of lifting the memory of what you went through do you think Joseph will waste his opportunity like that I've taught you here after many years of being in the prison no he would maximize destiny most people waste greatness because they really did not pay any serious price for it especially for those who inherited it there is a difference between respectfully speaking someone who just inherited wealth and blessings just like that and somebody who started from minus one before you got to zero before you now started climbing they are disciplined a lot more disciplined mismanagement many times is because we do not have a history and a track record of process are we together yes when pride wants to take over your life the holy spirit can easily pick one story from your life and remind you remember where i brought you from and quickly you call yourself to order woe betides a great man who does not have a history of experiences where the holy spirit can pull from to put your life in order you will not go far are we together hmm. finally the final reason why we go through process is so that through the pain and through the process we can gain experience to be able to raise others why does God introduce process to our lives so that through the pain and through the process that we go through we will gain experience that will empower us to raise others second Corinthians 11 Okay, we already took that. Let's, let's do 2 Corinthians 1, 4. 2 Corinthians 1, 4. Look at me, please. It says, who comforted us in all our tribulation. Is that in your Bible? That we may be able to comfort them which are in any trouble by the comfort wherein we ourselves are comforted of God. When you go through a process the day you see somebody going through it you can draw from your experience and say i have been there man of god don't worry apostle i give so much to my members i love them with all my heart and they don't appreciate me and then the man can say let me tell you a story in 1961 
1971 i remember having preached they beat me and drove me out of one village and you are listening and learning and you are drawing strength from it can i tell you you are not a true mentor if you don't have stories what becomes the basis of your teaching it is not only principles they say the secret of great men is hidden in their stories so god is giving you stories today sometimes i share the bits of my experiences that i share and i almost relieve them as i'm sharing them and nodding my head i'm saying how time flies who would have known that those seasons were only preparing me for these days and who who knows the days now all the seasons that i'm in now only god knows what is preparing me for can i tell you the truth you must learn to laugh when the law of process is at work in your life rejoice even when you do not understand god because you are drawing a story how else will you be able to help people help young people to prosper if you yourself have not tasted of poverty and all of that now you can tell them i know what it means to be 10 years without a job i know what it means let me tell you this what looks like the basis for shame in your life today will become what the nations will come to honor you for there are times in your life where a call will be made over your destiny but the requirement to climb that table of greatness is who has a scar in his hand anybody who does not have a scar they will tell you sorry you are not allowed so you may be going through things today the scar that god is allowing you to have has monetary value it has honor value go through it with grace as a man of god tomorrow if you are able to teach people and god honors you and gives you a global ministry when a young man comes and says sir i'm i'm in debt i'm not able to do ministry well you smile because it's not only memory verses you have you have memories you can draw from it and say i know what to tell you believe me i know what to tell you and then you begin to give the person stories today people come and they meet me and they say ah apostle i am owing um my life i tell them relax please have you eaten no you don't know that have you eaten this man talking to you as as i know what it means to be under financial pressure so that we can comfort others with the same comfort do not waste your pain there is a crown that your pain today will put on your head my question for you as we wrap up tonight's teaching is can god count on you are you going to join the many who have disappointed god and disappointed destiny or are you going to make up your mind whatever you want to do lord you can do through me whatever you want to say lord you can say through me whoever you want to lift lord you can lift through wherever you want to go lord you can go I'm yours. I'm yours forevermore. Yes, forevermore. Whatever you want to start, Lord, you can start. Me, whatever you want to end, Lord, you can end for I'm
I made a vow and I made a covenant with my destiny that I will not fail God and I will not fail my generation. But talk is cheap. These are the principles that you must be willing to go. If you cannot live with these principles, my dear brother, my dear sister, let me assure you that destiny will only remain prophecy and empty talk from the lips of a non-compliant believer. There are two prayer points we are going to pray right now. Many of us are stepping into defining moments in our lives. God has pointed all these areas. There has to be a prayer point you've already generated from this teaching. Without me having to prompt you, for some of you, it is the understanding that there is destiny within me. Some of you is the understanding that just folding my arms and crossing my legs will not actualize destiny. Some of you, you've learned tonight that destiny can be aborted. Yes, sir, it can. Some of you need discovery. Some of you need development. Some of you need to go for knowledge. Some of you need to invest in prayer. Very, very important. Some of you need to go for competence and excellence. Are we together? Some of you need to be disciplined and focused. And some of you need to stand. Haven't done all to stand. To understand that process is not anything strange. Process is not necessarily an attack. No. No matter how how well a mother feeds her baby the baby will not become an adult by the next day it will still be called a healthy baby and if an elderly man starves himself to death he will not say he will not be a baby an elderly man who became a baby he will be a malnourished elderly man there are some things that only time does if a woman takes in even if she's praying in tongues every day the time allotted for pregnancy is nine months she will have to wait in hope every day she can pray for supernatural birth and safety while she's carrying the baby but that nine months it must happen no matter how gifted your child is in nigeria and most parts of the world once he's not 18 years according to the law of the land if he's caught driving around they will take him to court even if he's as tall as an iroko tree if he's 13 years his height notwithstanding he will wait let me tell you the truth there are some things that will only happen with time and in time man of god no matter how you pray and fast take it easy the anointing will come gradually don't expect to get Benny Hinn's anointing overnight. Don't expect the grace and the impact and the result that is upon our fathers to land on you. But they laid hands on me. I can tell you what came on you. The whole thing came on you, but the administration of it is part time and part your knowledge. God isn't foolish. God will not carry the load that a camel carries and put it on a tortoise or put it on a dog. It will kill you. He says to not cast his spell before swine. So for some of you, be careful what you are praying for. Transfer that prayer into your future and be grateful for what God is doing now. Lord, I'm praying if, if I do not make 10 billion or 50 billion by the end of 2022, except God is not faithful. Let me help you. You are not wrong. You are not a sinner. It's just the wisdom you need. Because the way God works, he does not jump you from being a broke person to have 50 billion. You cannot have 50 billion without being friends with government and certain people. There is a network that will have to maintain that level of cash flow. There are many things we do not know. We just claim things blindly. And preachers, it's good to pray for people, but we must teach them wisdom. So we stop mocking ourselves in church and making a fool of ourselves. God gives speed. God makes great, but there is a process. Final scripture, Luke 
52 52 give it to us in amplified if we can or niv any of the versions and jesus increased one version will say grew this statement for many years disturbed me why should jesus grow jesus grow what are you growing into again the word the logos not part of it the the fullness of the expression of the godhead but when he became a man he was never born an adult there was only one adult who came and caused trouble immediately and god said no from that time everybody must go through process can i tell you run away from people with instant results without process before you celebrate people and draw their achievements and ruin your space and your destiny find out whether there is a track record if you don't find blood there if you don't find tears there if you don't find faith there if there is no equation in their life where they have to trust god and agree with god you are sitting on a time bomb is god helping us quit the pressure of trying to belong to associations and groups be patient and grow if god has given you the leverage of great parents or a good ministry good mentorship take it as a leverage but it will not replace this price that you must pay is someone ready to pray just two prayer points tonight one cry for grace lord grace to not disappoint you and grace to not disappoint my generation go ahead and pray may my life not be a lesson and a warning may it be an inspiration someone is praying may my life not be a lesson and a warning let it be an inspiration someone is praying that when they talk about those making impact for the kingdom in ministry in business forget about the naysayers focus on your destiny everyone on earth needs help including arrogant people everyone on earth needs help including those who act like they do not so don't mind anybody who looks down on you open up your heart early and say god help me someone is praying for everyone that ask it receive it lord i will not disappoint you and i will not disappoint my generation i obtain grace i obtain grace i obtain grace i obtain grace someone pray grace to find my place in life grace to be determined grace to go for knowledge grace to invest in prayer as a lifestyle grace to be disciplined and to be focused grace to be competent and excellent grace to endure let the fire walk me O oh god to become that vessel of honor let the fire prune everything i will pass through the law of process with honor Go ahead and pray i obtain grace to pass through the the season of process you are blessing me i thank you for what you have done in my life in the name of jesus look up please let me tell you one of the major principles i learned from our fathers of faith that has helped my life in a mighty way today a life of consistent gratitude for many of you if you take your eyes away from all this life of complaining and grumbling as a man of god god gave me 1000 members oh god if you live in that realm you will fail some of you you may not have one million the 200,000 naira you have in your account, the 10 million, the 100 million, you have 1 billion, you are saying, God, what is in 100 billion you cannot give me? 
father that you were able to trust me with one billion i am grateful this is what many generations may not even get i am grateful when we were growing up we used to sing a song some have food but cannot eat some can eat but have no food we have food and we can eat glory be good values now our children just say plus plus jesus minus satan very indisciplined way of saying thank you over a meal when last did you take your eyes away from what god has not done to look at the many things he has done is someone learning now make up your mind that this year will not be a year of complaining and grumbling unhealthy comparison lord thank god for the rapper you gave me but is this person not a human being too why are you giving her a rapper of two million and you gave me a rapper of 200 and god says you will remain there because you think i'm stupid for trusting you everything multiplies when you become thankful and thoughtful god god sees my heart and i will tell you sincerely i have never never ever wished to say oh god please i'm not grateful just make me like this mm, i don't do that lord i am grateful right from the time this ministry was in its infancy if i come for koinonia today sincerely and i see only 10 or 20 people from a leadership standpoint i will be concerned and responsible and find out why but intrinsically from my heart i will stand before the god of heaven and say the privilege you gave me to teach somebody don't don't downplay the fact that somebody will leave his house and come to listen to you i've taught you not everybody thinks you are a big deal a man of god called me one time some years ago and said he went somewhere and the honorarium they gave him was so insulting i just kept quiet and i just counseled him i said sir well i respect your philosophies but i have never preached because of money i never when i started ministry i didn't even know that a man of god goes to preach and they package an envelope and give him i never knew that sometimes it's when i'm done and i'm climbing the bike going they would tear 2a and roll money just looking like indian hemp and just squeeze it and give me and i receive it with joy it's still i get home that i even know what it is that that they gave me but right now we have many people you preach you go to a ministry where you see that the gen is offing and only you know they are struggling and you are i'm not i'm not here to cause any trouble in the body of christ we must be careful if you don't know how to kneel down and say thank you thank you god you gave me tea i'm tired where is bread god said because you even have the mouth to drink the tea they murmured in the wilderness is it in your bible it says do everything without complaining or argument in the next one minute I know that our time is up but I want you I don't know how you will say it but I want you to look at this God who has been merciful from January till now June it's part of the journey to your I don't know how you are going to do it you don't have to kneel or stand or whatever but let it be from your heart tell him thank you thank you father I've not gotten the job yet but I didn't lack food this year. I ate healthier and happier than even people who had jobs. Someone say thank you. I roamed around people with communicable diseases and Lord you have kept me and protected me. The same thing someone did and died. I did the same thing and I'm still standing. I like you to pray someone invested his money somewhere did not get returns and plunged through depression and died you invested your money there 
and yet you are still standing you have the courage to even stand say thank you take your eyes away from what God has not done just one minute is someone praying I praise you I praise you oh Lord I praise you I praise you oh Lord in my life Lord I see what you're doing one more time Lord I lift my hands in praise of your holy name. I lift my hands in praise. One last time from the depth of your heart. I praise you. I praise you. Oh, Lord. I praise you. I praise you. thank you for your hand in this ministry thank you for the miracles oh how can we complain you have been faithful thank you for every life and every family represented here thank you for everything that has happened in and around our lives from January till now whether we've understood it or not we say thank you because indeed you are faithful thank you for life thank you for health Thank you for favor. Thank you for salvation. Thank you for wisdom. Thank you for mercy. Thank you for deliverance. Lord, we vow tonight that we will live thankful lives as we trust you to walk us through the various phases of our destinies. We give you praise. We give you praise. We give you praise. Lord, we declare as a people and as individuals that we will not abort destiny in the name of jesus christ that which has been earmarked for us as far as destiny is concerned and as far as your kingdom come agenda is concerned lord we will live it to its fullest i pray for everyone tonight oh god following from zaria here in abuja and across the nations of the earth in the name of jesus the grace to fulfill your destiny receive it right now in the name of Jesus Christ and for some of you who have veered off the path of destiny the Lord God of heaven is showing you mercy tonight in the mighty name of Jesus Christ amen and amen there are people here tonight who haven't heard the things please keep standing let's just stand for a minute or two and let's minimize movement please there are people here whilst you heard me teach and preach the Holy Ghost began to speak to you that this service was for you he's brought you here tonight to give you an opportunity to start afresh for some of you and then for some of you you've never even made that decision for Jesus listen coming to Jesus is not a religious thing this is not just about a man of God making an altar call and you responding to it it is the Lord Jesus himself calling you to give you an experience you can choose to reject Jesus it is still within your power remember I told you that our destinies are predetermined by God but actualized through the decisions and the choices every one of us here who is saved had to make this decision consciously 
and tonight God is giving you a chance we have just a few minutes a minute or two for you you are here and you are saying apostle I truly sincerely want to make it right with Jesus or you are saying apostle I remember giving my heart to the Lord but honestly as it is now would you give me the chance to make it right with him there is always room at the cross for you I will count one to five because of our time and may I request that you quickly run if you can walk fast if you can and make your way to the front here and for those of you who are scattered across the overflows you may do well to walk to the front of your screens following from the nations of the earth whether in your room your office following by way of television now is your chance to make jesus lord of your life the bible says as many who will come to him he will not cast away come one are we celebrating them koinonia leave your seat and come to jesus don't be ashamed don't be afraid apostle i desire to come but i'm ashamed i'm afraid come come to jesus he's willing to give you a new beginning young old from far and near male female there is enough room at the cross come to jesus three i count five and then we begin to pray perhaps someone is still thinking apostle i do not consider myself to be a bad person only that i cannot remember making this decision join them join them there is such a thing as the assurance of salvation after everything i've done with my life can god still take me back absolutely you are welcome hallelujah praise the name of the lord i appreciate every one of you please come stand very quickly and the bible says as many who will come to him he will in no wise cast away listen as you're standing here i want you to truly believe that you're standing before jesus the son of the living god and that he's able to give you a new beginning praise the name of the lord i'm going to lead you to pray this prayer and may i request that you pray it from the depth of your heart it's more than a poem you're reciting this is a declaration of your dependence and your need for jesus please lift your right hand high above your head if you can and if you are following from across the world you can do same say after me everyone say lord jesus tonight i have heard your word i believe that you died for me i believe that you rose again for my justification right now i receive forgiveness of sin and i declare that you are my savior you are my lord and you are my king i receive eternal life into my spirit and i declare that the power of sin satan hell and the grave is broken over my life from tonight and forever i am a child of god amen keep your hands lifted father thank you for this ones no man is able to draw them except you draw them by your spirit they have come and they have made this declaration of faith therefore by the authority of scripture i declare your sins forgiven and in the name of jesus i call you recipients of eternal life in the name of jesus christ the power of sin satan hell and the grave is broken over your life I commend you to the ministry of the word and the ministry of the Holy Spirit. May you be grounded and established in righteousness. You go forward ever and backward never. He gives you a new beginning from tonight. In Jesus name I pray. Amen and amen and God bless you. Now please may I request their counselors waving the placard and waving their hands at you. My right which is your left please all of you in concert can you just move to my right which is your left or whatever direction where you find the counselors waving at you they'll have a word with you very briefly and then you'll be back to your seat hallelujah praise the name of the lord have you been blessed tonight let me speak over your life and then we'll wrap up for tonight I can assure you of one thing that when God is done with you all that will be left in your life is beauty and glory 
in the name of Jesus I decree and declare over your life may the blessings of heaven rest upon you every trouble of your destiny this is the week the Lord separates you from them permanently in the name of Jesus the wisdom you need to live an excelling life and to maximize destiny let it be released upon you fresh fire upon your prayer altar fresh fire upon your word study life you are an exceptional believer the presence of the Holy Spirit in your life becomes evidence to all let favor rest upon your life and it is speaking over your life the grace to go through the seasons and the faces of your destiny I release upon you in the name of Jesus Christ I declare that you are blessed today and you are blessed all through this month in the mighty name of Jesus Christ amen and amen again to encourage you you see what the Lord is doing week in and week out here please make sure that you invite someone to church it is your responsibility as part of this vision to ensure that you do not come to the house of God alone do not say there are so many people there is still room for so many to know Jesus to love him and to grow in the things of the spirit so please do well and and then be sure to also listen to these teachings again go to koinonia global and listen to it again and you can do well to help somebody with this teaching not just to market a man of God's message but to be able to get the truth to as many you can be helping a destiny a life a family a ministry the Lord bless you in the name of Jesus Christ after the grace do greet one another and um, look for anything that is good and blessed and just tell them as a communication of your love and the Lord will help us in Jesus name let's share the grace May the grace of our Lord, the love of God, and the sweet fellowship of the Holy Spirit, let it rest and abide with us now and forevermore. Amen. Surely, God's goodness and mercies will follow us all the days of our lives, forever and ever. Amen. God bless you. See you next Sunday.
Say whatever. 